Welcome back to the Melodic Caring Project. Today we connect with Andrew Day, and I'm not even sure how to introduce this episode other than saying I honestly needed this conversation. There's so much happening in our country right now, and Andrew speaks powerfully and graciously, unpacking some hard truths to help us heal and rise up to meet the challenges. She also dedicates and plays the perfect song to our rock stars and frontline workers around the world. Here we go. So I want to do something because I think that music was a gift that was given to us and it is a vessel for healing. I believe if we allow it to be, it can do that. And I do believe that we were endowed, I personally believe, by our great creator with the power to heal, the power within us and the simplest things to heal. And so I would like for you guys to all lift your voices with me in a chorus of Rise Up with the intention of healing yourselves, healing each other, healing this nation, healing all of the kids watching via live stream right now, because we can do that for them. We can do that for them. So I would love if you guys would lift your hearts and lift your voices and sing together for each other, a moment of selflessness, a moment of fearlessness in this moment. Joining us from her home in LA, Andrew Day. Thank you so much for making some time and hanging out with us. Yes, absolutely. I would rather be nowhere else than at home on my computer with you. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you probably have been nowhere else for quite a while, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, it, it's wonderful to have you, and um, we got to team up. It's been a couple of years, but when you were coming yeah. through Seattle, we teamed up and streamed your show to uh, a bunch of our rock stars that were watching from their hospital rooms all around the country, and you just gave, man, honestly, one of probably one of the most powerful and kind of beautiful and empowering shout-outs that we've seen in the 10 years of doing Melodic Caring Project. Oh, and... Um, and it was amazing. We, we watched it bring just a, a sense of hope and joy to the kids' lives. It had been doing, you know, battling some difficult things. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this. You know what I mean? It's amazing that you're not forgetting about these young people. You know, I think we get so caught up in our lives, we forget that this is a daily, a day, this is something we have to deal with daily, you know what I mean? And so I, I think that it's really important that you guys do, we appreciate you a lot. Well, likewise, likewise, because you're, the way, you know, the way you approach your music and the way that you, um, I don't know, it just feels like your, your, your whole heart is in it, you know, your intention is in it, and it feels very purposeful. It doesn't feel, obviously there's the, uh, that whole element of entertainment, and you bring right. an incredible show, but mm -hmm. there's a whole depth beyond that that's, um, that's purposeful, you know, and you, you bring um, a healing quality with your music. What is that, what, what, I guess, what does, that, what does that mean to you, you know? That's, you know, it's funny that you use the word healing because to be honest with you, that's actually how I look at it. You know what I mean? Yes, I'll have songs I'm talking about heartbreak or I'm talking about just what I did that day or, you know, it's, but I, I do believe, it's funny that you brought that up because I, I, I remember years and years and years ago and I was reading, again, everything sort of stems from a spiritual perspective of me because of my faith, but I was reading, I was praying and I was reading and I came across this scripture that was talking about a town that was in a drought or their water was sick. I'm probably not gonna quote this completely accurately <laughs> right now. I should just have it here, this is why I do music. But, um, and it was a town that was like in a drought or their water was sick or it hadn't you know, come through. And so no one could help heal the waters. No one could help heal the waters, the waters were sick. And, and so they found the prophet Elijah, actually it was the prophet they were looking for. Elisha, actually, I'm sorry. And when they brought him in and he examined the water, the first thing he said was, bring me someone to play the lyre or to play the harp in some translations. And I just remember reading that scripture. Wow. And then as soon as they started playing, he was able to touch the water and heal it. And I remember like, as being younger, that really, really moving me like, oh, like it was almost clicked like, oh, that's its design. You know what I'm saying? It could be used for a multitude of things and it doesn't even have to necessarily always be such empowering inspirational words. Sometimes when you just 
hear a song of someone going through the same thing you're going through or just, you know, um, talking about their life and you can relate to it, it's really healing, you know yeah. what I mean? And so, it, so that's a good word because that's really, really how I look at it. And I think that is music in its optimal state. That's what I believe that it was designed for. And so that really, that was a really, really profound moment for me in, in my life and in approaching music and in approaching uh, creating and writing music, you know? Sure. Well, I yeah. think, yeah, I think there's a, it's interesting because I think that is when we are in, in our, um, in the state that we were created to be was when we are creating, right? Because yeah, that's, that's, that's the true. thing, that's true, you know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it's interesting because, you know, in a lot of ways it's, it's like we're putting science into what is the healing power of music. And I think that's great to find out, but almost from a perspective of we're trying to decide if it is healing when we've known right. for thousands of years since our oldest written text, you know, I mean, David exactly. and Saul and seeing the power of music to affect the human spirit or always been there, always, yeah. always, always been there. And even talking about that, like on a scientific, on a cellular level, you know, like I always, that goes to it as well too. You know what I mean? That's what, everything at its source, right? You know, we're talking about, molecules and atoms and we talk about subatomic particles and at the core of those subatomic particles are vibrations right if you think about yeah. the world that everything is made up of vibrations then of course music is so powerful you know what i mean like of course it affects us if everything is moving and shifting and then you put music into that which obviously is sound vibrations you know it's i think it it really has it's at the core of our design even, you know what I mean? And so it's yeah. really like, for me, what I what I believe in, things that I think and I ruminate on. And, and um, so it's just, it definitely has that power. And I think to sort of look at it as sort of like a side hobby kind of thing is actually more of a detriment to us as a global society than, you know, um, than we think, you know what I mean? Because it's, I mean, it's incited revolutions, you know what I mean? And it's garnered people their freedoms you know and it's it's um and yeah so it's a absolutely. powerful tool i think yeah for yeah. sure I, it's maybe that goes with our mania of making everything a product you know a, a, a consumable oh, rather yeah. than a powerful healing right. tool you know right it's, yeah exactly that's very true yeah mm -hmm. hmm. Man, yeah. I like talking to you. <laughs> we all in the ether just <laughs> boom, 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 just boom. quick get in there quick that's right <laughs> well, so out of curiosity then, I mean, with, I mean, knowing, right, knowing that music is, um, it's almost miracle in action. What is, right. what is one of your most profound music memories? Um, well, in it, funny, in addition to what I just told you, because one of my most profound music memories, again, was what I read. And then in reading that in a time in my life, that combination of that. So not even listening to music at the time, but reading that was one of the most profound. I think another one of the most profound music memories was hearing um, Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit for the first time. Oh, you know sure. what I mean? That was yeah. really, I was 11 when I first heard that song and I could not process it. All I knew was that I was just experiencing something that i don't know i think even as a young person at that time even though i knew the song was old and i knew it was from the past there was something that just really felt very present about it you know what i mean yeah. and so to hear her voice creak through and to hear i mean it was eerie and inspiring and uplifting at the same time and like it was really i can't really describe exactly how i felt at that time at 11 12 years old you know what i mean because i wasn't really fully aware you know sure. what I mean? all yeah, i knew was that it was something really important you know what i mean yeah. that was that was definitely i mean hearing her period for the first time i heard two songs i heard sugar which is completely on the other side of the sure. spectrum <laughs> sugar, I call them. but um and then hearing strange fruit and that those those were definitely a moment that that was definitely a moment for me in music that was really um profound you know what i mean yeah in, in developing my style even in music you know it wasn't just an introduction to jazz but like to the soul and to the struggle of it all it was really really powerful for me 
Well, yeah, and again, it, it, it elevated music, right, beyond just being music. It was music wow. with profound purpose and power yeah. as well. It was a cry, really. It was a cry, yeah, and it yeah. was actually not just a cry. I don't know that that's even the accurate way. It was, it was defiance, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a cry, and it was defiance, and it was, like, a willingness to sacrifice. I mean, that's really what that was, and her singing that song was, so that was definitely... A huge moment. And my musical theater teacher actually shows, introduced me to Billie Holiday and that song of all people. <laughs> Took a break from doing, you know, Aida in Oklahoma, <laughs> Sweeney Todd, <laughs> to just listen to some Billie Holiday. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was a really powerful moment. Uh, man, Definitely. well, so, I mean, you know, speaking of the power of that, that song, Strange Fruit, and... Um, I don't, man, I guess, you know, where we, so when we set up this interview, right, was like a, a week ago and a lot has happened in a week's time. Um, yeah. How's your heart and what, uh, what, what healing can we be intentional about with music and, and just our lives, our choices, you know? Yeah. I mean, first of all, what you guys do is a lot of that already. I think when you serve other people you know what I mean not only are you altering them but you're also altering yourself and it's I think serving is really a sign of completion right you know what I'm saying like we that's what we're really designed to do you know yeah. and I and so you guys are definitely already doing that but I think you know with regard to everything that's going on and sort of the social climate in the landscape right now I mean asking that question is a big part of it and I think one of the biggest things that we have to acknowledge, right, that Germany actually did very well later on, you know, is we have to acknowledge and we have to admit and we have to reconcile, you know, and that's, we have not done that. There are so many of our stories that haven't been told. There is so much of this oppressive narrative that has run rampant and so much about the truth about it that hasn't been told. I think it seems so diabolical to people that it's on, they're almost unwilling to accept it. You know what I mean? It's like mm. one of those delete it from your memory. It's like a trauma memory. You just want to get, yeah, you sure. know, delete it. But, but if we don't, if we do that, then it continues to persist. And I think, you know, I wrote something the other day, I posted something and one of the things I said in there, I was likening it to, to addiction, right? You know, there's, there is no sobriety for an, alcoholic in denial you know what i mean and that's like not just right. sobriety but healing and everything and it's like being willing to have an honest dialogue because then when you can really have an honest dialogue then you can start to look at systems and then you can start to look at things textbooks monuments street names school names you know i mean even our jesus here is painted with blonde hair and blue eyes or you know what i'm saying like the yeah. features like you know, when you really know the intention, people's intention from that time to imprint our minds with these images and these ideas, and you're really willing to accept, okay, this happened and it has to be reconciled, then you can have the conversation because it includes not just police reform, not just justice reform, it includes our textbooks. You know, my cousin was here living with me and when they talked about slavery in his textbook, it was a blurb and it said slavery, a difficult situation. And it's like the narrative is so important when it comes to healing, you know what I mean? Which means our textbooks have to be honest about it. Our textbooks also have to be honest about our history and the contribution of people of color to our development and to our very independence. You know, had, yeah. had a slave Lafayette not carried false orders to the British army, infiltrated their camp, risked his own life, only to come back here and to still be a slave. Still be a slave, right. To fight for that. Had that not happened, we would not have our independence. And so I think to really have an honest dialogue, then we can start to get into all the minutia and the facets of things that we've got to change our thinking, you know what I mean? And, and it comes with conversations and dialogue like this, you know, but, um, you know, and, and when you ask questions like that, you know what I mean? Like, just like what you did, asking questions and willing to understand and to learn without offense, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. just saying, here's an issue, we've got to reconcile this, you know what I mean? And 
you know, it has to matter to people, you know. So anyway, that was a super long form answer. I, it was, that was <laughs> really beautifully put, and I appreciate it a lot, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. there's, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, I can just, just speaking for myself, there's just so much emotion. There's so much happening, sure. you know, and it's like you say, it's very hard to process. And a lot yeah. of, I think a lot of times rather than having to process or having to even embrace what all of it means or unpack it, it's easier just to turn mm -hmm. away from it, you know? And it is. I, it's, it's much easier because, you know, even when I say like, or do you just desire change or are you committed to change? You know what I mean? Because when someone says, hey, we should take down this monument, <laughs> this looming, yeah. intimidating, which was intentionally built during segregation, during Jim Crow, not during slavery and not during the war. It was intentionally built after to intimidate people of color. So when you have this looming statue and people say that should probably come down, not that we shouldn't learn about him and know, but it should probably come down. And when it tightens people, well, no, why would we take that down? But why does it have to stay? Is it because you are familiar with it? Why do you want it to stay? Is it just mm. because of familiarity? And just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's helpful. Doesn't mean it's building toward equality, building toward peace. And that's really what I mean by a commitment, right? The third verse in our national anthem is celebrates the, 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 the murder of slaves, you know? And that's, there's, these are real, like, why is it so important for us to hold on to certain things when it's like, maybe we've got to talk about transforming those things, you know what I mean? Because again, like I said, if the narrative stays the same, then the problem persists, you know what I mean? And it's like about asking those deeper questions. Why is it so important for me to hang on to this familiarity? Not that we don't need to learn about it, sure. but does it need to be held up as a pillar to be revered, you know what I mean? Because that, that has... That breaks people, you know what I mean? So hmm. yeah, but thank you for asking, I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you for, um, I guess just such a concise answer, you know? I've, I, I Honestly, I haven't heard it put that clearly mm -hmm. in that, um, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't even have the words, you know? But it just, I, I've, <laughs> And to be honest, I don't know that I could have put it that clearly five years ago. I think we've mm -hmm. sort of, you know, even in us, it's sort of like really just making strides, you know what I'm saying, towards change and even understanding, right? Because, you know, even our own oppression is like, I mean, you still have to understand it in order to figure out how to root it out. Sure, you know yeah, I mean? of course. So I think that that... Um, is a um, is an important part, you know. I mean, the dialogue is, is cannot be cannot be overlooked, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I one thing I can say is that you managed in the last ten minutes to bring a clarity that I've been trying to find for the last four days. Oh. You know, so oh, wow. I I appreciate. Thanks for trying that. to find it. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Some I, people are not, so we appreciate <laughs> you a lot. <laughs> So with all of this, um, obviously music has a huge amount of significance for you and in your life and in your spirituality. Do you have, and I, I probably already know the word, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> Do you have one word that you can um, summarize music as, what it mean to you? Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, now I'm going to try to find another one because I already used it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh. Uh... I mean, I'm just going to say healing. Dang it. <laughs> For sure. I always it's, do that. It's, it's perfect. You set it up. You set it up yeah. like 15 minutes ago. That was amazing. I know. I was like, I was like, you have one word. And I was like, healing. I was like, oh, you said healing. I was like, <laughs> like uh, blessing, a gift. I'm going to ask him. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Embrace yeah. it. Embrace it. Because it is. It is that. And I've watched you deliver that healing with your message, you know, I mean, we, uh, I don't know, it's, it's interesting, we've, we've seen a lot of experiences now with Melodic, where um, there's been kids that were, you know, might be too weak to lift their head off of their pillow, and by the end of the evening, after getting love from, you know, from you, from artists, getting those shout outs and that music, by the end of the night, they're dancing, you know, and, um, and that's, that's powerful, powerful, it's you know, really I mean, powerful. it's like, 
And I think people will always try to reason and rationalize that it doesn't happen, but it does. You know what I'm saying? So like, if we're not willing to accept that we're missing something, you know, I, I, I think, you know, again, from my faith, right? One of the things we believe is that we're a body, right? So the finger does affect the toe and the sure. knee does affect the back and the back affects the legs and the, you know, and so, and you see that, you know, like even just to hear you say that right now just really moved me in such a way because I'm like, God, you know, it's almost like why I feel like the slowing down of things, not the virus itself, that is very tragic and I'm sad about that, but the slowing down of things yeah. and the intentionality and the interaction of people you know, the busyness can be a really dangerous thing for no us question. because anything that makes us too busy to connect is actually chipping at our very being and our very health. You know what I mean? And so just to hear that story of those babies is just like, I call them all babies. I know they're, you know, kids, but in my eyes, they're all our babies. <laughs> yes. But that's really, really powerful, man. I, that's amazing to hear. Yeah. I, w I want to know more like how about how they're doing and some more stories if you will yes well we'll we will share more with you yeah. because it's yeah. like you say you know and and you know i think that there's um I, I, what we've learned obviously over the years is that music is powerful but music coupled with intention is mm -hmm. that's miraculous you know i mean yeah. when when uh and, and that's something that you have, you embrace, you know, is that, that intention yeah, with your music that you can make, um, you can affect change, you know, and, and you do. So thank you for oh, that. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> um, so you recorded, you, you pre-recorded a song for some rock stars that, uh, that we're going to play and it's beautiful and incredible. And they, um, we already shared it actually with a couple and they, loved it so uh -huh. we'll, we'll share some of those messages with you as well but um okay, before we okay. play that video is there any any final words you want to leave with folks before we show the video um final words that i want to leave with folks um i don't know just really just do things with purpose and with intention and just and to love people and to understand what that means. You know what I mean? To love people and and to, you know, I always think about, actually, I'm going to say another scripture that I always think about. I can't remember the name because my memory is crap. But, <laughs> but it's one that talks about regard each person as higher than yourself. And imagine mm -hmm. living in a world where every person regarded yeah. every other person as higher than themselves. You know what I mean? The more attention that these kids would get, you know, with what they're dealing with. And so I, I think that's a really, that's a powerful one. It doesn't mean you're not diminishing yourself. You're actually elevating yourself and your entire community when you regard others as higher than yourself, you know? I think that's a super important one. And just sending my prayers and my love out to all of these kids. <laughs> I want to send them another video too, so I'm going to hit you after this. <laughs> just to say, just more hi. Like, I was going to ask you just for more names. You know what I'm saying? To just yeah. say hi to people, just chat with them, rap with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think well, that's what I... Um, well, <laughs> thank you for those closing thoughts. They're beautiful. I, I, I love you. I'm going to say it. That was... Uh, love thank you, you so much Definitely. for connecting of and course. just sharing, sharing with us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And tell everyone I sit there. I love them not to all the melodic rock stars. Mwah, 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 mwah. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hello to all my melodic caring rock stars. It is your number one fan here, Andrew Day. I just wanted to send a few special shout outs. Before I do this song for you guys, I wanted to say hello to Katalea in Minnesota. Happy birthday to you, love. Lily in Arizona, what's up? Uh, Ambie in Michigan and Samantha in California. How are you guys doing? Mwah. I also wanted to send a special shout out to all the frontline workers at Mary Bridge Hospital in Washington, Sydney Children in Australia, Children's Hospital in New Orleans, there with Karen, Colorado, as well as New York Presbyterian Hospital. This song is for you guys. Mwah. Here we go. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry go round, and you can't find the fighter. 
But I see it in you, so we can walk it out and move mountains. We can walk it out and move mountains. And our eyes of our eyes like the day. Silence is quiet, and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe. And I know you feel like dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet. Ooh, mountains bring it to its feet and. So much y'all god bless Mwah. bye thank you all so much for joining us if you or someone you know is battling illness and needs support you are not alone sign up today at melodiccaring.org and a huge thank you to all our first responders and healthcare providers working so hard during this covid 19 crisis we appreciate you i'm levi ware this is the melodic caring project